Hey, how you all doing, Millsup Garage here? Boy, I've been busy. Really been busy. Been working a lot of a lot of stuff here, and uh, thought I'd just do a video and let you know what I'm up to. Uh, I think I bought my last batch of this stuff. Uh, that brings me up to about a thousand rounds. I figure get it while the getting's good because uh, what I realized is that although this is a uh, military surplus 1938 Nazi marked and all of that, this is really the best stuff that's out there for the Steyers, this uh, or Steyers I should say, this uh, <coughs> M30 stuff, which is the uh, 8x56R. And uh, what's cool about this stuff is that uh, it's this old, but I I buy this stuff up. Now, I, I calculated, actually, that um, when I first started buying it, I was buying smaller amounts. I just started with just a little of it. Didn't even know if this stuff was a lot of times stuff this old. It's all hang fiery and and uh, with duds and everything. But it uh, performed so well, and it's just like, it's like buying uh, brand new ammunition. I didn't have one uh, failure to fire or feed or eject or anything. Um, the stuff is so good that uh, I kept going back and buying larger quantities for better prices. So each uh, individual purchase, I was paying a certain amount per round. But I actually sat down and figured it out. And I said, okay, with how much I bought and how much I paid all together, let's see what I'm paying for this stuff. And um, came out to $0.66 cents a round on end blocks. I mean, how can you beat that? Um, you can't even get this stuff for 66 cents around from, uh, you know, PPU. I think PPU and Hornady uh, makes this stuff. But um, look at these stripper clips after cleaning them up. I don't know if that's even going to, like, show in the video exactly how this stuff is like. Every once, you know, every few boxes you'll end up with, uh, whoops, with some that are a little... Uh, some that are a little uh, cruddier looking, but uh, for the most part, this is what this is what they're like. And the uh, don't know if that's going to come out, but they are the Waffenot stamped ones for the most part. And it's nice that there's there's a medley, there's a mix of like you know different ones, um, which is kind of cool. It's it's almost like I remember the M1 Grand days of actually uh, you know researching the end block. Uh, the end block, the different end block clips, and trying to actually get one of each kind, and uh, this is kind of bringing me back to those days. But uh, this stuff is um, awesome; it really is. And I, like I said, I, I think I'm done. I think that last round of uh, that I bought was uh, was going to be it, and I just stored it all away. And now, uh, you know, for the amount that I'm going to shoot these tires, the things really beat the crap out of your shoulder, and they're like, you know. I just imagine every once in a while uh, bringing them to the range and uh, putting some rounds down range. Um, so I think this will last me quite a while. But what's interesting is that I end up with this brass, um, the, the Nazi Mark brass. Uh, you're definitely not going to be able to see that, but, uh, but they're, they're all the same. They're all that, that, uh, that, that German uh, acquisitioned you know, ammunition. And, uh, of course, I end up at the end of each uh, range trip with uh, a whole bunch of these uh, these end blocks, which are, I see that they sell. I mean, I could probably sell these on eBay. I'm going to really contemplate it and look into it and see. I used to be an eBay seller, and that was years ago. Um, I did enjoy it, but eBay's changed um, since then. And I uh, don't even know if I really want to get into it, but I'm certain that... Um, if I took half of this stuff off these uh, end blocks and you sold half of them, all you really need are like 20 of these things. How many of these things do I really need? Even on a range trip, that's the most I'd probably shoot would be about, uh, you know, 10, 15, or maybe 20 of these uh, these uh, these end blocks worth, which would be, uh, you know, five rounds in each one. 20 of these things is 100 rounds, you know. Right? It's like that's right. I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't imagine uh, putting it more than 100 rounds down range in a range trip with, uh, with so. So I'd be able to have all my stuff on the end blocks and then just reuse those. So even though, let's say, I kept 20 of them and I got rid of all the rest of these and sold them one by one, I could probably make my money back on what I paid for the ammo, you know. But uh, we'll see, because otherwise I don't have any more ammo to load up on these things, so then they just wind up sitting around anyway. Every time I go to the range, I come home. I'm just going to have a pile of these that are just going to sit there. 
Uh, the way I look at it is might as well sell them, and maybe somebody will buy this brass. I don't know. I'm saving it. Guess we'll see what happens. Um, I'll keep you guys abreast of that. If I actually, I don't know how I do with uh, with the eBay sales. If I actually try to do that. Uh, number two, um, something that was pretty cool was that I. Uh, this is the uh, Widener Special SKS, the Hugo SKS, and I uh, I had to drift the front sight here, and um, it's interesting. I don't really have much experience with doing this, but it it gave me some confidence, and I think I'm going to uh, attempt to mess around with some of the other guns. Uh, they're not quite as easy as this one. Some of the other ones are uh, dovetailed in there, and it would probably be better to have that tool that you could just uh, crank to move it back and forth. I don't know if that tool is universal for a bunch of different guns, or you got to get one for each gun. That would kind of suck. Those things can't be cheap. Um, or maybe devise something of my own to kind of clamp on to be able to screw back and forth to, to make fine adjustments to the dovetailed ones. But this one, if you could see it, is just kind of like a cylinder right in there that just uh, runs across. So it's much easier. You could see it's hardly sticking out on, uh, on this end. It's hardly sticking out over there, and it's uh, poking way out over here on this side, because it was uh, it was patterning right, so I had to drift this over to the right, and uh, it worked. And then uh, since it was now hitting dead center, it was actually it was actually interesting. I was firing at 50 yards, and the the lowest that this goes, the closest that you could put for this uh, sight is is, uh, is 100 yards, and at 50 yards it was. Um, patterning very tight and uh, and just a little bit high so I would have to I'll aim just a tiny bit under where I wanted to you know with a, a, a point of aim you know and uh, I'm pretty sure then that would mean that at 100 yards this thing would be absolutely dead on and perfect you know but I didn't have enough time in the day to switch over to 100 yards and uh, really see if that were true but next time I take this thing out I'm definitely going to be at the 100 yard range and really seeing what this thing can do uh, maybe I'll do a video down there on that and uh, post the results and uh, also uh, acquired this really cool um, Yugo sling um, which utilizes this uh, front fixed barrel uh, clamp here the barrel uh, loop uh, perfectly nothing else fit in here no other clips of any other slings fit in this because it's like a smaller clip but uh, it's just pretty cool to actually be utilizing that thing correctly. And, uh, and the sling is really nice. Now, this thing came, uh, trying to remember where I got it from. I think Liberty Tree Collectors um, has them. They have them on eBay, but uh, don't get them on eBay. They're a little bit more expensive. Actually, get them from their website. It's actually shipping's a little cheaper, and uh, the sling itself is a little cheaper on their website. Um, but uh, it came with that like cosmoline smell, and there's no way you're gonna soak it out of uh, you know of a sling. But it was just so bad that you know every time you were just even near the gun, just that that petroleum smell was terrible. So, um, but I have a good uh, system for this because um, I've done it before. Um, what you do is you spray it down with that kind of stain remover that you pre-treat clothes with. The one that I use that I like is called Zout Z O U T. I guess um, it's like a, um, it's it's definitely something that you would use specifically on like grease or oil stains. You know what I mean? It's specifically made for that. And uh, what you do is you spray you spray it and just soak it. Um, I would wet it a little bit first, actually, because um, then that gives the uh, the zout um, the ability when it when it goes on the wet strap to soak in a little bit better. And um, you you soak it down. And it's funny because even trying to wet it, it, I could barely even get it wet because it was that soaked with cosmoline. And then uh, you spray it down with the zout, and you let that stuff sit on there um, for say about 10, 15 minutes. And then uh, you throw it in the laundry. Throw it in with your regular laundry. I, I wouldn't throw it in with your clothes, obviously, because it would make things stink. But uh, what I threw it in with was uh, uh, my batch of rags. You see that. Uh, that thing right there as I the stuff I use to clean rags that are full of stuff and you do have to be very careful um, on a side note um, if you get uh, BLO and uh, mineral spirits and hoppies all over rags and stuff like that and you're working and you just throw them in a bin like that in a bowl and you leave um, that could actually go on fire you have to be careful you could look online and read up on exactly why this happens or how but 
um, just especially BLO, they say, boiled linseed oil especially, um, is that something about it, it when, I always thought when things evaporate, they get cool, but for some reason when that stuff evaporates, it actually creates heat. I don't know how it happens, but um, I did read about it, and uh, I don't mess around with that. I take these regs and I lay them outside the garage on the ground uh, overnight just to make sure, or if I do, like, just throw them in a bowl, I throw them in a bowl outside on the concrete here, so if they go on fire, they're not going to burn anything up. Um, it is all lined by brick here. I just kind of throw them in the corner by the bricks. And uh, then when they kind of dry out a little bit, I transfer them to here. Anyway, just a heads up. So uh, I don't want anyone to copy this and then burn their garage down. The Millserv garage is burning down. So uh, when I wash these rags, that's when I threw it in there with that stuff so that it would all kind of, uh, you know, wouldn't really matter if it uh, smelled things up. But uh, how soft and uh, how soft and nice it came out, it was, uh, it was really cool. And uh, huh, what else we got going on? Got this cool magazine. I hope they make this a yearly magazine. It's a 2013 date on it, so you guys might know about it already. But if you didn't see it, you could, you could look this up. But just look up Military Surplus Magazine on eBay. There's a million people selling it. Um, but it's pretty cool. Pretty cool magazine. And I hope they make it a yearly magazine or, or a, 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 a series where this says premiere issue. But um, hopefully they make it where uh, this is uh, bi-yearly or yearly. Yearly would be okay but it would be nicer if we had a quarterly magazine like this uh but i mean then again how much how you know how much can you report on the same guns but you know there's always stuff you'd be able to write about if you had uh you know you, you pulled a bunch of articles out of uh you know the other magazines like uh when they feature an older gun you'd probably have plenty of stuff to put in here and uh, information but uh this one was pretty cool and I also got this book, and uh, I like this book. Another, a uh, lot of interesting information and uh, reloading information. And what I like about it is it's got a lot of old pictures like this. I dig these old pictures, you know. It was actually, they were talking in here about the M1 carbine, and they showed a picture of a German soldier uh, marching with uh, a bunch of German soldiers marching, and one of them was carrying an M1 carbine. So that was pretty cool. I know, you know, if I was... If I was Warren, and, uh, you know, I was, I fancied a, one of the enemy's weapons, I would have no problem with picking that thing up if I had enough ammo for it and using it. Right, Charlie? Huh? You lazy boy. Yeah, you lazy. Charlie did a lot today. He's very tired. Right? Yep. Well, anyway, that's that. Just wanted to uh, do a little chat and let you know what I was up to. And uh, I'm going to be doing a little vacationing next week, but uh, don't really have anything planned, so it's going to be nice. There's going to be a lot of trips to the range and a lot of uh, little idiosyncrasies with these guns to iron out and uh, have some stuff to chat about. Have a good one.